In this video, we will look at Formic. Formic is a form handling library for React that allows you to handle forms fairly easily. What you would do without a library is create a lot of different states, basically each state for different input boxes and then you map all those input boxes to those state and it's just a mess because you need to create a lot of different states and it's never a good experience. There's also an alternative to this which is React hook form which I had created a video on so if you want to have a look at this after you watch this, I will leave the link in the description as well. But this video is all about Formic. So we are going to see how you can set Formic up, which is pretty easy. And we are going to see how you can do stuff like form validation, how you can set up a simple form. And in this tutorial, I'm just going to use Veed. I know that I've been using a lot of Next.js and I think we should move on with something like Veed more often. So yeah, let's get started. So before we move on to the actual coding part, I want to show you the website itself. So if you don't want to see this, if you want to directly jump to the coding part, you have the timestamps in the description or you can simply slide the video and adjust the timestamp to reach the coding part. So let's see what this has to offer. So it says Formic is the world's most popular open source form library for React and React Native, which is interesting. Like it also supports React Native. Build forms in React without the tears. <laughs> that one hit hard. Then there's a lot of different stuff which you can read here. It's, it's a lot of things, so I don't want to read it in a video. You can simply pause it and read it if you want to. But yeah, let's get started. It says Formic is a small library that helps you with the three most annoying parts, getting values in and out of the form state, validation and error messages, and handling form submissions. So it claims that these three things are a lot more easier if you use Formic rather than handling a form yourself. So there's also a bit more about motivation. I, Jared Palmer, wrote Formic while building a large international administrative dashboard with Yon White, with around 30 unique forms, it became obvious that we could benefit by standardizing not just for our input components, but also the way in which data flowed through our forms. I feel you, man. Like if you have like 30 different forms, I would definitely not do anything from scratch. I, I would rather use Formic or some other form handling library to just do everything for me, like almost everything. And uh, yeah, uh, why not Redux form? You can also have a read here. Uh, I do not know what Redux form is personally, so I don't want to spend a lot of time here. So if you go to the tutorial section, we will say, welcome to Formic tutorial. This teaches you everything you need to know. And then you have the prerequisites. Uh, basically you need to know React and uh, set up for the tutorial. And this is the code which is like the basic code, which lets you, know, lets you know how you can set up a form. There are no providers you need to set. All you need to do is use the use formic hook. You need to set the initial values and have the on submit functions because of course you will submit the data somewhere, right? And then you just have a form tag and just let uh, formic handle the submission. Then you can have your input fields. You need to have the name as the, ID, na uh, name as the one which was here, the key of this like email. So you need to have the email as the name here. When I was testing this ID wasn't really necessary, but they say that you should also have ID as the same, but I don't think it's really necessary. But if you want, you can do that. Here on change, uh, you just say formic.handle change and in val value you put formic.values.email. Now it will do its thing. Like as soon as it's det it detects the name, which is uh, matching with this one, it will start doing its thing and you do not need to make states for this. The only time you are defining this your form, it's here. So you do not need to create states and handle all the types and stuff. Like it's, it's just, I don't even want to talk about it. So yeah, that's how you can do it. And so let's get started. I, I will also touch on validation here. There is no validation function here, but I will also be touching on validation and how you could integrate Zord into it so that you can make validation a lot more easier. If you don't know what is Zord, I have a video on it, but you can watch this one. It's pretty easy to understand for this video. So you do not need to worry about it a lot. So I'm going to create a new Vite app. I'm just going to say bnpx create Vite at latest. I'm going to name it Formic. And we are going to use our template, which is React. If you want to use TypeScript, go ahead. But I feel like this video doesn't really require TypeScript and what I've been doing with my videos is like use TypeScript when it's not needed and I think it's really not that beginner friendly. So let's go to Formic folder and let's do pnpm install and then we can do code dot and pnpm rum dev. So let's wait for this to finish. All right. 
Oh yeah, before we even do that, we should install our packages right now so that we do not need to do that later. So pnpm install formic and we also need Zord. So if you don't, don't really require Zord, you can feel free to skip this one. But for the sake of tutorial, I'm going to install both of them right now. Perfect, now let's do code dot and pnpm dev to start the dev server. Perfect, where is the VS code? Yeah, let's get this to full screen. Now, what we need to do is let's go to SRC. First thing first, let's clear everything. We do not need anything here. So I'm just going to remove everything except the fragment itself. And we do not need the state, of course. Uh, let's remove everything. Yeah, uh, I think I will leave the CSS for like the basic styling, but everything is pretty much useless. Now let's start with creating a form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use formix. So you can name this variable anything or you can even like destructure it if you want to. I just want to use it like a formic form. And then I'm just going to say use formic. And now we can have the configuration for the form here. Now, now as you saw in the docs, you need to have the initial values for each field. So we're going to have an initial values field here and we're going to have three fields for this tutorial. We are going to have email. Uh, the default will be this uh, name and password. Yeah, perfect. Now what we can do is, yeah, I mean, it's fine. What we can do is we can simply create the form itself. Now we can say form uh, and now we can have the on submit uh, and we can have formic dot handles handle submit sorry formic form dot handle submit now you do not need to worry about this what it will do is it will call the on submit function which we are yet to create so first let's create the form itself now we are going to create a new div here and let's have an input here input type email name email um, and what else placeholder email address let me save this and uh, then we can do on change form it. Hold on. Let me try to see how we can form it form dot handle change. Yeah, I wanted to get it like this so that it's better visible. And now we can have value form it form dot values. And we can have email. I know this is a little lot like if you saw my react hook form video we didn't we didn't need to do anything like this it simply had a function called as register which would do everything for us but i think you can create a function like that which will do all of this for you automatically and you do not need to have these two fields which is like th the reason why we are using formic right we do not want to use this but yeah it's still offloading a lot of creating states and just giving us a clean thing here so yeah now i'm going to create three divs uh, because we have name and password fields too so this one is going to be password this is let's change this to password as well password perfect now we need one more so i'm just going to paste this here next oops the actually the type sh should be text and the name should be name actually and then here we can have name i cannot type and then we can have values dot name here perfect what i want to do is like i want to get this before password i mean it's not necessary it's just for looks perfect now the form itself should work but we need to see if it's working or not so we can simply do on submit and this is supposed to be a function so we can have the values and we can create a function and I want to console log everything first. So I'm going to do console log values. Perfect. Now let me get the Chrome thing in other window and now we can go to localhost 5173. Perfect. Now we have this, but we do not have a button. So we do, we, we, we do need to create one. So let's go below this div and I'm just going to say button type submit. And I'm just going to say submit submit the form. Now, if we go to a console, if we submit the empty form, we should get an error though. We haven't set validation yet. So we will set that. So stay tuned in this video. But without a validation, we get an empty ob with object with empty values, 
which is fine because we haven't entered anything so if i just enter my email my name and password i'll just keep like one two three four if i submit the form you will see that we get these values in the console so basically the values object has all the values and you can go ahead with whatever you want to do in the inside this function. you can either call another function or you can perform all your logics here but I, if i was to do that i would call it another call another function in another file so yeah now let's talk about validation right now there's no validation right anybody can like spam your form without and without even like you having any validation and it will still submit it uh, and if you have any like api calls it will be like a bunch of spam requests and you might get rate limited or there might be some costs so yeah uh, to get rid of this problem we need to have validation in our form which will make sure that every field in the form is properly managed and uh, there is no spam like there is no like empty input fields or somebody forgot to like enter something it will give you the necessary error and uh, only after the form is all right this on submit function will be called and then you can do whatever you want with it so how do we do the validation then you can simply have a another function here which is validate yeah i think it's only validate and this also gives you the values now what you can do with the values here is like you can simply say if if values dot email dot length is equal to zero or or you can simply do it for name also so i'm just going to copy this it's going to be a long one i'm i'm, I'm doing this to show you the importance of zord though so this is going to be password and this is going to be name if this is the case then we are just going to return an alert all fields are required you see just for a normal validation to see if the fields are filled or not you need to do a lot of if statement and a lot of checking that is the reason why we use sort but anyways let's check if this working or not so if i submit an empty form we should get all fields are required perfect and it's still for whatever reason it's still like logging out which is not ideal but hmm let me see why it is doing that thing i think we should be passing like errors so what yeah so it turned out it wasn't going to be easy at all i needed to go in like do multiple if statements to get the individual errors and then i had to store it into an errors object and then i had to return the errors and to see the errors actually before we print it out on the screen i wanted to alert it to just see if the errors work or not so let's go back and now these should work i will reload the page so that the console is gone now if we submit this if we should get the json thing email is required password is required name is required and we can easily print it on the form it's not really a problem but i want to show you like why do you even need to do this like this is just one part of the validation right that the name is required email is required password required but what if you have complex needs like the email should be in between some range you need to add more arguments here or if you need to check your email uh, if it's formatted correctly you might need to use regex and the function will get bigger and bigger and it won't make any sense so we will use zord i'm going to create a new file here i'm just going to call it form schemas dot js this file is intended for all this you can name it anything but i'm just going to make this form schemas dot js ideally i would store all my form schemas here but we only have one so i'm going to do import z from zord so again if you don't know zord and if you want to learn more you can check my video but you can get a basic idea here so i'm going to call export const um form schema is equal to z dot object and thank you so much copilot uh, but the thing here is that we need some fields here so like for max you know what i don't want to copy all of this thing because it's going to uh, it's it's a lot of typing here but you can manage the error messages and everything right here so i have this object created already sorry the schema created already this is the form schema so what's we are what we are doing is we are opening as uh object here zord will check if it's an object or not and the object we should have three properties the email, email and password each of them having their own specific rules so like the name should be a string minimum should be one so if it's like you pass in an empty string it will say name is required if you pass in anything more than 30 name can't be more than 30 characters email should be like in the form of email without 
any involvement of regex and it will say invalid email if not and yeah uh, it's pretty similar errors every like in password you have minimum eight and maximum 100 so feel free to change these rules according to your needs but what we are going to do is we are going to remove every single thing from here we do not need absolutely anything here we only need a try catch block and here we need to do uh first this should be an you know what we do not need to have an async function we can simply say form schema we need to import it so auto import it and dot pass and we are going to just pass in the values here and it will just do the passing and if there's some error we will go into the catch block and now the now uh, javascript doesn't know what this error type is you need to check if it's a zord error or not so we need to import the zord error class thing so import uh, from zord so we need to import zord error perfect and now we can simply say if uh, error instance of zord error so we are checking if the instance of this error object is a zord error then we can simply do return uh, error dot uh, form errors dot field errors and this will give us all the errors we need and we can simply render it onto on the screen so what i want to do is like after each uh, div opening i want to create a new paragraph and i want to have something like for make form dot errors dot email like this and we want to have this for each and every field so let's do that for this this is going to be name and for this it's going to be password so yeah uh yeah by the way could we have done this for uh the normal validation yeah we could have but like i want to show you with zord you can have like the error messages here and they can be seen on that side so i just wanted to do that like here but if you don't wish to use zord you can just go with that way and it will just work fine so if we submit an uh, empty form we will see an error above every single text field. like it will say invalid email it says name is required password should be at least eight characters now if i have like a invalid email first of all the browser should cry but it's not crying for whatever reason let's not have the name and password yeah the browser is crying now but uh, yeah now let's have a legit email here and let's leave everything else it will give us the name is required and stuff now if we just have everything here so one two three four and if we submit the form oh yeah we need eight characters my bad now you should have this in the console that means that the on submit function was executed that means the validation has passed now you can do now you know that the form data is validated and now you can do whatever you want but i still want to let you know that you should never trust your front end like what an attacker could do is like they could simply bypass this function and they could just still execute this function so do not have any business logic here always have that stuff in the back end and um, don't trust your front end still be very skeptical about the data so yeah that's all i want to say so yeah that's it for this video in this video you learned how you can use formic for better form management if you like this video make sure you click the like button hit the subscribe button and with the bell notification and share this video with your friends so that they enjoy the same level of knowledge that you are enjoying right now if you have any content suggestions like covering some library or covering some kind of concept which it's very difficult for you to understand right now or if you want me to create some kind of huge build like a full stack application which i'm going to focus a lot more on this channel make sure you leave that in the comments below any kind of suggestions would be appreciated so yeah that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one bye